What is up everyone? Welcome back to another video. This is going to be part five of us working through the evasive machine here on the Hacks Murder platform. Now this is part five. So if this is the very first one that you're watching, you might feel a little bit lost. I recommend starting with part one and following along with the series. In addition, you will learn a lot by watching me. You'll learn even more by hands on keyboard and hacking right alongside of me. So if you do not have a sub to Hack Smarter, head to hacksmarter.org. They are incredibly affordable, boot up evasive and hack right alongside of me. Finally, you may notice that there is chat on the screen. I make these videos while I live stream and I live stream all of the time. We have a little over 60 people right now hanging out with me and you should join and be in the live studio audience. So make sure you subscribe and hit the little notification thingy on YouTube so you're notified the next time I am live. I also see some questions in chat. Guys, we just finished the Q&A segment. When we are done recording this, I'll do a little more Q&A. So if you have questions about what we're doing specifically, I'll answer them. But general questions, I'll come back to those at the end of the recording, which is in about 15 to 20 minutes is what we are aiming for. All that being said, let's go ahead and dive in right where we left off in the previous video. And in the previous video, I gave you a challenge. I showed you how to create this NIM stager, the NIM stager for sliver. And I wanted to see if you could generate the shell code, host it and send an email to Alfonso and get a shell. If you were able to do that, honestly, round of applause, congratulations. If not, that's okay as well. We will work through this together. So I have the stager here. I've already compiled it with PowerShell and NIM right here. And if you look at my desktop on my Windows machine, we have the stager.exe. Now, as I shared before, everything I'm gonna do, I actually teach in my Sliver C2 course. And we'll see how accurate my course actually is because Evasive came out after my course, but it still applies. So if we go over to the course, and if you don't have access to the course, you should go get access right now, either through a subscription or buy the course standalone. We just finished compiling the code right here, the .exe. Now we need to transfer the stager to our Kali Linux machine because it's on our Windows VM. We want to get it to our Kali VM. There's multiple different ways to do this, but I like to use Impacket SMB server. You can actually see the syntax right here. You can copy it directly from the course if you have access to the course. And let's go ahead and get this set up. So I'm going to jump over to our share name and I'm just going to call my share hack smarter, our share path. I'm going to do home Tyler hack smarter evasive. We'll just save it to that path. SMB two support will be good. Otherwise you'll get an error. My username I'll make Tyler and my password will just do hack smarter one, two, three, like so I'll add an exclamation mark to make it even more secure. And that should, oh, unrecognized arguments, SMB2 support. Really? Did I do the syntax wrong? Impact at SMB server. We need to do, okay, do you want me to do username for, oh, it's just single dash. It is the wrong syntax. I'm gonna have to fix that in my course. No one has told me that yet. I have two dashes. I think it should just be a single dash. There we go. To update that in the course later. Good thing I'm doing QA to my own course again. But we have SMB pulled up here, and now we should be able to go to our Windows machine. And honestly, we sh we might be able to just open in File Explorer. I'm gonna do two back ticks in order to grab my share I just set up. I gotta grab my tunnel IP. Yours will be different than mine, but your tunnel OIP is gonna be your VPN IP, and we'll go to that. Act smarter. Maybe we see the connection. Did it prompt me for the password and I accidentally ignored it? Bruh, I should have permission. I literally gave the file. What if I try to copy stager.exe to that hack smarter? Okay, I know my password's, oh, here's the prompt. This is what I was looking for. Tyler, act smarter, one, two, three, exclamation mark. Let's make sure I type that correct. And I did, and remember my credentials, hit okay. That's the prompt I was looking for. Now, we should be able to go to it. And we can, beautiful. So then what I'll do is I'm gonna open up a new file explorer. 
and we can just go to our desktop. We can grab our stager right there. I'm going to copy it and we can go over to my SMB share and paste it in. And that should transfer it to our Kali machine. I'm going to go ahead and exit out of SMB now. And I'll just show this to you. We have our stager.exe right there. And I'm going to rename that. We'll just call it um, update.exe. We'll make it look a little less sus than <laughs> stager. Dot exe. So we have update.exe, but we still need to generate our shell code. So let's see how accurate my course actually is. So we connected and transferred it. Now we need to generate our sliver shell code. So I'm not going to show you in this video how to install sliver. I do have a video on my YouTube channel on how to work with sliver and how to do some basic stuff with sliver. Otherwise, check out the full course. But I'm going to do system, system CTL start sliver first. We're going to get Sliver started, and now I should just be able to launch Sliver. And we can check for updates, but we're not going to with that. I even give you the syntax, which unlike the last one, I'm pretty sure my syntax here is correct. I'm going to copy and paste it, though, because this is a good test of my own notes I have in my course. All right, so we're going to generate it. Our file location that we're going to save to, we'll save it to Home Hack Smarter Evasive. And let me look at the rest of this format. Shell code looks good. Oh, you know what? I just realized you guys can't see this. Let me do that again. So looking over the screen, you should be able to see this now. Minus chat's kind of in your way. But we have, I'm going to save it to Home Hack Smarter Evasive. Our format of shell code will be good. AMD 64 is good. OS Windows is good. We just need to fill in the IP of our Sliver server, which in our case is just going to be our Ton0 IP. So let me grab our Ton0 IP there. And I'm going to paste that in like so. All of that looks good to me. We'll hit enter on our keyboard. And what that's going to do is generate the raw shell code that we need. All right, we'll start up our web server next on port 80, and we just set up a listener on our Sliver instance. So we'll give all of this a moment. If we go over to our terminal here, <clears throat> we should see once the shell code is generated, you can see my VM, hopefully my audio is not freaking out. I remember before when I generated shell code, it like, my whole computer took too much CPU because I use Kimu and it has CPU pass through. So for those of you watching live, let me know if uh, my audio bugs out. We'll give it a second to load here. No one's saying that the audio is bugging out, so I'm assuming that it's working. Piccolo said, AD isn't my specialty, but next time I'll try and follow along in these labs, especially doing free access on your platform. Well, thank you. This one isn't AD that I'm doing. This is just Windows, but the lab that we released today is AD. So you will enjoy um, that one. I'm good. Audio's good. Sweet. Is it done yet? It has taken just a little bit to generate our raw shell code, but... It usually doesn't take this long. I don't know why it's taking so long. Maybe I need to give more CPU to my VM so that it can generate the shell code faster. The reason it takes so long, though, is we are generating like raw shell code. And that's what our stager is going to pull down. And you can see it's done. We call it the grim showstopper.bin. But in our code, I think we called it shell c.bin. So I'm going to move that to shell c.bin. And I'm actually going to double check my code. Let's see if I'm right. Visual Studio. Yeah, shell c.bin. Now, you can name it anything you want. In a real engagement, we probably wouldn't want to call it shell c.bin. That's very obvious what it is. But you just want to make sure when you generate that raw shell code, you, the name of your shell code on your Kali Linux machine matches whatever you did in your code on the Windows machine when you created that stager.exe. And because when I generated the stager, I called it shell c.bin, I need to make sure that my raw shell code is also called shell c.bin been there. So now what we are going to do is jump over to our instructions. 
So now you need to host this shell code so the NIM stager can download it. The easiest way to do this is with a simple Python web server in the directory where you saved the shell code. Although I think in our stager, oh, I did use port 80, okay. So I, I thought I used port 443 here, but I used port 443 when I generated the shell code. This will all make sense once we spin all of it up. So let's go ahead and open up a Python basic web server. The reason for this now is when Alfonso downloads our stager, the stager can reach out to us and download and then execute our shell code. Okay, so you wanna make sure our Python web server is running on port 80 because that's what's specified in our NIM code on where it's gonna download from. And over on Sliver, we wanna set up a job. I think it's, if we just do MTLS uh, like so and do jobs. Oh, I forgot it does default port of 888. We don't want 888, so I'm gonna do MTLS. And I think what we can do is it dash L10, uh, whatever my IP is. Well, we should just be able to specify the port. I'm forgetting even my own syntax there. MTLS dash L for L host. And that's gonna be this right here. Your ton zero IP and then dash lowercase l for the port, and we're gonna do port 443. And now if we do jobs, we can see port 443 there. Now, if you're wondering, Tyler, why are we doing port 443? Well, remember when we generated our shell code up here, we specified port 443. So when the shell code is downloaded and executed, it's gonna to try to establish a session on port 443 to our sliver listener. So I know it's a little bit confusing, but there's two things that you need in place to follow along. You need to have a web server. I'm gonna rename this tab web server. So you wanna have a web server listening on port 80. And then in Sliver, you need to have a job listening, which is just another name for a listener, on port 443. With those two things in place, we should be good to go to send this .exe over to Alfonso and hopefully, fingers crossed, hopefully we are able to bypass Windows Defender and get a shell. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm gonna send the email to alfonso at winserver01.hs. He said he wanted the exe program. We'll say, hey, Alfonso, see attached for the program you requested. And I'm gonna go ahead and add an attachment. I'm gonna go to home, hack smarter, evasive, update.exe and attach update.exe to this. Generally, you wouldn't just be sending a .exe in an email, right? You would wanna zip it up, possibly uh, add a password to it and then tell the user, hey, unzip this and run it. A little more social engineering. Most email programs aren't gonna allow you to just send a .exe, but oh well. <laughs> Hel hello, Alfonso, see attached for the program we requested and we have the update.exe. All right, it says sending was complete. We can go ahead and check our sent folder <clears throat> and we can see the exe program right there, the update.exe. Now I actually don't know how Adrian did this. Adrian is the one who created this machine. If you've ever done a Try Hack Me Red Team Lab, you're likely aware of his work. He used to be on staff with Try Hack Me, created many of their really good challenge labs there. He no longer works for them. He is a full-time Red Team operator and he created this for us. And actually, I just saw this back here. We were able to get a session. It, I, I'm, like, I'm really surprised that worked on my first attempt. If we do sessions here, you can see that we have a session on WinServer01 as the Alfonso user, and we can do sessions-i and start typing our uh, session name or our session ID right there. And it should get us into the session. And we have an ID as WinServer Alfonso. Windows Defender is fully running. It is fully enabled, but we were able to get a session. And I think this is a very good stopping point for this part because from here, you can begin doing some post-exploitation enumeration. We might, looking over at time, I do have a few minutes before we have to stop recording. We might be able to grab this first flag. I don't even know what we're looking for though. What is our first flag? What is the name of the company that is being bought? Well, we could dir like users, 
Alfonso. And that might, oh, that, I'd have to drop into a shell, I think. How about LS? Yeah, LS works. So if we LS see users first, I'm assuming there's an Alfonso. Uh, so can I drop into a shell? What might happen when I do this, and this will be a good challenge for you to figure out, you can drop directly into a shell here in Sliver, but there's a good chance that when we drop into a shell, Defender's gonna be like, hey, this is a weird process. So we could also do process migration. First, where we migrate to a safe process in order to save ourselves, but let's try dropping into a shell. If that doesn't work, then I can give you the challenge of figuring out how to do process migration, and you can actually migrate to another process. So it says bad OPSEC, let's try it. We'll say yes, so, so far we're good. If I go to users here and do dir, we have Alfonso, so I'm gonna go to Alfonso. We can do dir here. I'm guessing that this information is gonna be in one of these folders. I'm first gonna try his desktop. And we have a file called mergerinfo.pdf. And I'm almost certain that's where your first flag is gonna be stored. But now this is a good challenge for you. I have showed you how to use Sliver, how to create a custom stager written in NIM, how to bypass Windows Defender. We sent our phishing email over. We were able to get a session as the Alfonso user, and we found a .pdf called merger underscore info. But you can't just cat out a .pdf. It's not going to work for you. So can you figure out how to read the .pdf file? One hint I'll give you is if you're using Sliver, there's built-in functionality to download remote files. So you may be able to download the merger info.pdf and then look at the flag that way. But I wanna leave you with that challenge. Try it on your own first. A lot of learning happens by stumbling around and bumping your head into things. If you get stuck, that's totally fine. Join me in the next video and I will do it right alongside of you. We'll grab that first flag and then we'll start working on post exploitation and enumeration and information gathering and all of that fun stuff. So give it a shot on your own and then join me in the next video and we will continue hacking together.